Hello everybody, I would like to continue with my investigation of various coil designs and we'll here specifically talk about what is the difference between a standard coil and a bifilar coil. We start with the specifics like the fundamental specifications of each coil and then we talk about what does it mean in a system and what does it mean for um, our energy um, transition between the coils in the system. I will focus in the beginning on my identical solenoids on the belt. Remember I built, built them in mind to have a one-to-one -one copper ratio that counts for the single layers but here's a double layer. It does not count for this one. However, I was interested about comparing the double layer and the single layer of a bifilar coil to see if I can derive some um, characteristics out of it, which helps me to calculate future um, constructions of coils. So we have here, that's the standard solenoid coil. It has 680 windings, as does have this bifilar coil. They have both the same length of wire, they have both the same wire gouge or the thickness of the wire ordered 5mm, but they are both completely different. So I will go through details what is identical and what is different. First test, resistance. I assume that most of you are familiar with Ohm's law. If not, not a problem. I have on my website under scientific formulas and laws, I have Ohm's law. So just in a nutshell, what does Ohm's law say? Ohm's law says a resistance in a wire, when you add this resistance, the resistance will increase. What does that mean? That means so long as a wire the higher the resistance. So if you look at the identical amount of numbers of windings, you would assume that resistance should be identical. So the 10.9, the 11 ohm are the standard solenoid um, winded, wound coil and the bifilar is half of it, 5.86 well, you might say, okay, probably I did something wrong, I probably mixed it up because there are two, there are two windings in parallel wound and then at the end in series connected. So if that would be correct, so that means I have one layer and in between I have a second layer and at the end I connect them all together and have on both sides the so beginning at the end. I still would have in resistance should have 11 ohm but I don't I have only 5.8 or 5.9 ohm if I would connect them in parallel if I take half of the amount of wires it would be 5.6 ohm and if I collect them in parallel based on ohm's law I should have 3 ohm so 3 ohm would be the value for parallel connected wires if I would have done something wrong but I would at no under no circumstances reach 5.86 ohm. So that's the first difference. Let's go to inductance. If you look now at the inductance level, we see here a big difference. The standard solenoid coil shows us 2.8 millihenry, but the bifilar coil only 0.68. This is a huge difference. That is about almost 40 times less inductance than on a normal coil. Using now a precision low cost LC meter capacitance and inductance I get for the bifilar coil, bifilar coil I get 21.99 microhenry and capacitance zero Measure it now the same for the standard coil. So the standard coil 
how about 30 pf capacitance and inductance 2.901 millihenry so it's close to what we had before on a normal LCR meter measure now is a double layer gives me 178.6 microhenry and capacitance interesting quite a lot 465 pf yeah. looking now at the inductance values that gives me for the standard um, solenoid coil standard wound 2.897 millihenry that is compared to the bifila wound called 130 times less inductance compared to the solenoid and to the double layer 16 times less so that has a big implication in terms of frequency and so on so what I'm going to do is start now establishing the frequencies of the coils the first harmonic I found for the standard solenoid coil is 1.37 megahertz it's confirmed on the oscilloscope I look, we look for a second one the same frequency, resonance frequency, is triggered when I feed in with the signal generator 462 kilohertz. So with a lower frequency I get a resonance frequency of 1.3 megahertz as well. But the peak is stronger when I have it a 1 to 1. That means 1.3 megahertz in and resonating at 1.3 megahertz. That's what I'm going to focus on. So bifila has a frequency it's 4.3 megahertz however it's very very hard for me to stabilize it because this pulse generator is not accurate enough that's going to change I get new equipment which will be very pretty precise and will be able to go above that so it has only one resonant frequency I can hit that's 4.35 megahertz um, my put generator is limited to 10 megahertz, so every, every harmonics above I would not be able to see. So that's that's a good value. That's something we can deal with. So we have inductance for the solenoid, we have inductance for the bifila. I have reference frequency as well, so now I can match them with capacitance to the same value, which other that they can um, both be in resonance. So double layer with twice the amount of windings is surprisingly predictable around half that mark I reach 2.2 megahertz on the counter and again I have a, a difficult time to yes 2.28 megahertz it says 2.2 yeah so yeah, nothing I can do about that it's the best I can do. Yeah, to the two six megahertz. That's a double layer, bifilar coil. So that is a frequency which is standing out slightly from the pancake coil. The rest is, is pretty much on the same line. So let's add some capacitors to um, change the frequencies to become. Um, to reach a value we can use for our systems.